so just a little bit about this like series or this this content I want to film called art therapy mm-hmm. and it's essentially about how artists channel their mental health yeah. to essentially actually self-medicate because that's how I feel um, going through depression and anxiety yeah I really just the only thing that helps me is to stay creative and and focus on the world within yeah. and not focus too much on what's going on outside because once I start focusing too much on what's going on in the world and other people yeah. and everything that's outside of me it gets really dark yeah. and I get very anxious but as soon as I stay within and the beautiful creative like world that I see yeah. and the colors and the visions and the future I see when I look within yeah. that's the only thing that kind of keeps me going and I think even though I don't have like a very easy the the creativity that I have is not easy to communicate because it's just kind of like all over the place it's not like painting or music it's it's really weird so I can't it's, it's, it's not indirect it's indirect yes and but I also want to do this because I want to you know, talk to artists and people that use the art to channel what's within. Yeah. And I want to know how you do that and why you do that and what exactly it is you're channeling. Yeah. And then maybe we can come to like a common understanding that can teach me something. Yeah. As somebody that has an indirect <laughs> art form. And maybe we can teach each other something. Or people that are listening. Yeah. Help them to channel what's going on within them. Yeah, yeah, and, and you know, channeling what's going on within can be a very painful experience. Cause there's and a joyful one. And a joyful one, yes. But nonetheless emotional. And depending on how in tune you are with your emotions, you're going to deem it to be a negative thing or a positive thing. There's a lot, a lot of parts of the world that just deem emotions as outright bad. And... I guess for those people, it be it's harder to channel their emotions creatively than for those who are a bit more in tune. But you strike me as a quite emotionally in tune man. How do you think did you get there, growing up in a Nigerian household? Uh, I actually grew up a, a crier. <laughs> okay. I'd cry at the slightest thing, uh, and I would use it. Uh, and I cried healthily up until like the age of 16, 17. Mm. And then I remember one of my friends said to me, oh, why are you always crying, man? And that, and it was the first time I'd thought about it as like being a sign of weakness. Mm. And my young brain goes, cool, you'll never see me cry again. Okay. And I stopped crying which was super unhealthy. And now it's a struggle to cry because I remember how relieved I used to feel after crying, like Mm. if I got angry, it'd be like, ah, and that. So it it was a shame that my young mind back then didn't listen to to my friend, who's their friend, like he's one of my oldest friends. But um, yeah, it was, (laughs) uh, yeah, I just, stopped crying and I feel like I've missed out and that so in terms of emotion uh, I feel like I've never been afraid to show my emotions in terms of like when I was angry I was angry and I'd let people know I was angry mm. and that um, if I was sad I'd let you know I was sad if I was I think some people would actually think I, I was quite moody mm. and that. but in terms of emotional intelligence, I feel like it's something that I'm still learning about. And that, like, one of the things I hate most about myself, and I, I use the word hate deliberately, it's not a dislike, it's a hate. I hate my temper. Oh, really? You have a bad temper? Yeah. What? Yeah. I can't even see that in you. I know, I know. I know. <laughs> That's so scary. Yeah, but, but I hate my temper. Um, up until about five, six years ago, I used to think that when I got angry, 
I held my intelligence, but I realized that no, I was at my dumbest when I was angry. Mm. Like I just didn't make good decisions. So now I run away from my anger. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. Literally, yeah, yeah. I f- I, I'm not just running away, finding ways to control it, just to, so that it's. I don't get engaged with it, where it starts making decisions for me. And it's also like I feel like anger. I think, especially growing up in an African household. Yeah. I know that. No, I mean obviously with my dad. I know that anger is such a anger children are not allowed anger. Yeah. Are not allowed anger. As soon as you show any form of anger in front of your parents, it's the deepest disrespect you can do. Yeah. What? I remember like my dad telling me off and I would just look at him in the eye and be angry. My dad would but get so mad. He's like, what are you looking me in the eye for? Like, what, are you yeah. angry, yeah? You, mm. What? No, 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 Basically no. you can't challenge a an, an, an Nigerian. Yes. And I, and I just feel like, that, and I just realized, I wanted to ask you this question before, and I just realized as yeah. I said that, there's a question in my card game that asks, yeah. what didn't you have as a child growing you up that you will ensure to give to your children? And now that we spoke about it, I realized one of my answers is definitely allow them to show anger and be angry there's obviously and because sometimes you're like oh you don't want you know your children or women people to be angry because of what they're gonna do if they're angry angry yeah because anger is a very dangerous thing but if you teach young people and children to use their anger as a tool for something and let them at least come out with it yeah. in a way and finding ways on how to channel that anger rather than mm-hmm. just telling people to just not be it, which is unrealistic because we're humans, we're going to get angry. Yeah. Then maybe we, we can redefine anger. Yeah, that might be a smart approach, but it's really hard when a little child's anger is making them self-destructive and they don't know how to channel it and it's doing stuff and you're there as a parent and you've had a long day at work and blah 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 Mm. and and you say yo let me just squash that now because it's an emotion that a lot of people don't have like a control over sometimes when they get angry they lose control and even more so for a child and that so yeah it's all good letting the child like with my younger son allow him to express his anger but it's up to a certain point Mm -hmm. when he starts doing silly things or going too far to the point that he might start enjoying his anger that's when I nip it in the bud so how do you nip it in the bud? Uh, not he. From when he was a baby, it was he would ramp up. So he would start, and me and his mum would call it like levels, mm. and that. So level ten's the worst. Yeah. And that. So at level, if he gets to like a level three, if you don't start bringing him back down. If he gets to five or six, then he'll go to level 10. Mm. And that, so it was literally just bringing him down. And, I, I, and the tactics I use have had to adjust as he's got older. Yeah. And that in terms of bringing him down. Uh, the last time he was angry uh, was actually last week. He, he, I was trying to tell him something, but he was trying to tell me his version of it. And it wasn't making any sense because it weren't realistic. And it's a four-year-old kid trying to tell me what's what about something that was a scientific fact. Mm. And I was like, yeah, no. And I think we was getting ready for him to go to school and he was just being bullied. And I was like, listen, that's not how this is going to work. We don't actually have time. You need to do what I'm saying. I'm telling you to do. I can't remember what it was exactly. And then he got angry and he started like going. And after about five minutes of it, I just goes, all right, cool. 
you're starting to get on my nerves now and you're going to make me angry mm. and that so you need to chill out but I can say that to him now mm. and he did chill out mm. and what not like he, he, he doesn't chill out for his mum he does not chill out for her yeah, at because all because they know exactly where to press yeah, isn't it yeah, with yeah, mums yeah, yeah. Because at the end of the day, it's like with moms, it's about emotion. With dad, it's more about like discipline. I remember like getting like beats, not crazy beats from them, neither of my parents, but I got beats. And I remember my mom's beats were always emotional beats. Like she just, at this point, she just hated my God so much that she had to slap me. My dad's beats were never out of anger so much. They're just like, you did X yeah. and this is why you're going to get Z. Yeah. And there was no bad, crazy emotions with it. And neither shame afterwards because it wasn't an emotional decision. It was yeah. a logical decision. You don't know how to respect me or you don't know how to behave. Yeah. Or I ask you many times not to do this. You continue doing it and now you're going to get yeah. a few slaps on your back. See, I, I, don't, I don't hit my kids. Yeah, 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 I'm not saying that's no, a good no, thing. No, but but I'm just saying it did make a difference for me whether yeah. my mom hitting me out of emotion yeah. and my dad hitting me out of like discipline. Yeah, because yeah. I, do, I do think you should never hit a child yeah. in anger like, you should never hit a child generally if, yeah generally yeah. But, um, I remember with my older son and that uh, because my younger son's not at that age I just be like when he would do something I'd just go you know what just go to your room just go to your room I'll come and see you when I've calmed down mm-hmm. and that uh, but <laughs> I I knew the psychology of it was he would go in his room and he'd be so shit scared of what I was coming in to do, that that was the punishment. Okay. And that, but by then I would have calmed that. By the time I did speak to him, I'm no longer angry. Blah blah blah. Like literally, I remember he would go in his room, and I'd start watching football or some shit. <laughs> like, yeah. I, I literally I would forget about it. Yeah. And whatnot, and then I come in and I see that like it fix up and like because like, he yeah, didn't yeah, know what yeah, was coming, yeah. and that, and I was okay. like, ah, oh, this is a nice little tactic. So how would you say, talking about your anger yeah. and you saying that you have a bad temper and everything, yeah. how would you say you channeled it within your art and why do you think, what do you think also like could have happened growing up for you to be able to deal with your anger in different ways? I, I think, because my dad left my mum when I was two, but I think I saw my dad hit my mum. Okay. I haven't got a specific memory, yeah. but I have no other explanation of why I have a temper other mm. than that. But I've always had a temper. Yeah. And that, so I, I think it was to do with that. And yeah. What was your question again? Basically, yeah, where do you think your anger comes from and what do you think mm. could have been done or how could you have been supported as a child? Uh, you think? I don't. I don't think growing up back then, the support for children was really there. I think mm. in this day and age, it would. I think the tools, society as that the conversations, um, that parents are now having about in terms of their child's mental well being is being discussed a lot more than it was when I was growing up. So, yeah, it's it wouldn't have been a thing back then to help me out. It was literally, you're a naughty child, here's your punishment. Whereas now, I think they would investigate why I'm being naughty. Mm. Yeah. Or at least tell you ADHD and give you some sort of medication. Because that's well, what happens a lot with the whole newfound mental health of children. Yeah. That's I, the other side. But I, I get what you mean I, though. Yeah, yeah. I, I, it's weird. Even back then, I'm not sure you could have conned me into taking medicine that I didn't want. Mm. Like, I'm a fussy eater anyway. So, like, relying on pills and... It, they would have tried to diagnose me ADHD. I would have probably rebelled against that. So when you say they were saying you're naughty, so you think that all that anger had a lot to do with... You know, because sometimes it's not just about with children especially. They live in a world full of feelings and energy. Mm. Sometimes it's not even about seeing your 
parents having a certain dynamic you feel it it's literally in the yeah. air for you yeah. all this thing even the way your you your mom felt when she was pregnant with you you're literally brewing yeah. in things yeah so this is where all this like i guess this is also where all this um, generational trauma comes from because you're yeah. literally brewing in the soup of your bloodline yeah and then you are here as the end product of your bloodline yeah. and you can we carry a lot of weight and sometimes certain levels of anger, anger or certain triggers of anger have been with your family for so many years and for you to be able to express it is actually to heal it but i guess it's the way how the way we 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 channel that anger and express it and i guess do you feel like with your art you get to do that uh i do get to channel stuff and uh, i've only drawn one piece so far with negative emotions mm. but it was more i don't think it was to do with anger i think it was me escaping suicidal thoughts mm. and like i remember um you know ellen the tv yeah. host her dj committed suicide yeah yeah the black guy yeah, yeah yeah i think of him sometimes as well i was so pissed off that he'd left two young kids Yeah. And I remember feeling judgmental like why would you do that yes. to your kids and blah blah yes, blah. Yes. Whatever you was going through right. Yeah, and that. yeah, and, yeah, yeah. Um, I didn't have enough empathy for him until mm. I started having suicidal thoughts too. Mm. And then you realize when those thoughts come there's they they just don't care about people. You just want to get out of there. And that, yeah. and like literally, I was so overwhelmed by these suicidal thoughts. I started thinking about how how I could do it, and it not be painful. Mm. But literally, I just wanted to leave, and that, and the 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 thoughts like started really slow, like kill yourself, and that, and it was just this voice from deep within just saying kill yourself and that and then i was like right, cool so i ignored it for the first two days but about the third day it was just relentless and by about the fifth or sixth day like i remember waking up that morning and i was like cool If this is my last day, then I do I do it so it's not painful. And then this, it was weird. This other voice just went pain. Mm. And literally, I stood in front of this easel and just without thinking, just started painting. I didn't know what I was doing. And I was just there. And as soon as I finished that painting, like that spirit, that bad spirit that was on me, just left, disappeared. Mm. Hasn't been back since. Like. What did you draw? It's right there. Can I, is it this one? Can you show me? Yeah. Can I see it? Yeah. Oh, wow. Wow, can I show it to the yeah. camera? Yeah. Mm. So it came out. But... So you would have hung, hung yourself? Is that what we're thinking? Uh... I won't, I won't think and hang myself. Who's that? Is that God? Huh? Is that God up there? Or is it the bad spirit that told you to kill yourself? No, I think it's me. This is you? Yeah. Mm. I've not tried to analyse it. It's just there. But where I am now in my life, I feel like
it's proof that well, to use a Tupac lyric and I actually did a painting of this if you could make it through the night there's a brighter day for me I'm you know things that maybe depress me some parts of depression is like maybe societally not being where I should be as a 34 year old woman and I'm not just talking about I'm not necessarily talking about children because I'm actually not sad I don't have any. No. I would like to have some potentially, but I'm not actually sitting there sad that I don't have any because no. I work with kids and I know the work that goes into that and I cherish my lions and my choice of waking up in the morning. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> not like yeah. people with kids, you just wake up when they're up. Um, but, you know, maybe having like a partner or being somewhere financially or looking at my business of how much work I put in and I just still don't feel that it's, you know, or comparing myself. There's so many different things where you can just add them all up and think, yeah, this is why I just don't enjoy this human experience. Yeah. But by the time I'm back and I show myself this discipline, like discipline is my highest form of self-love. Oh, excellent. And the moment I realized that if I can control my behavior and control what I want to do beyond my, my, my desires yeah. of like, laziness wanting to sleep in or my desire of smoking a cigarette or my desire of eating something sugary or yeah. my desire to drink alcohol and party or my desire to just have sex yeah? yeah the moment i know how to control and be disciplined and be logical about it in a way of like i know i want this right now but i've drawn from past experiences that mm this is not going to be progressive for me and this is not going to add any value to me in the long run. It's going to be one of them ones where you fulfill your desire and then a moment later you scoop all the way back yeah, down. Yeah. And to be able to control myself like that, it's like you're training, I'm training a muscle memory of, of, of controlling and discipline and that helps me also to control my thoughts. Because yeah. initially my depression is about not being able to control my thoughts and steer them in a direction that serves me. Yeah. But just let them run wild and then it bringing me down. So through practicing discipline, in like eating, I stopped smoking. I smoked cigarettes from when I was 14 years old and I just stopped at the beginning of the year. Yeah. Stopped drinking, um, stopped my, I didn't stop having sex to be fair, but that's just something that comes with all the other changes I made. So it's kind of like, I'm not really fulfilling my sexual desires for the sake of it. I actually really feel like I'm looking into just getting to know people, yeah. getting to know men, not people, because yeah, I mean, to men. So getting to know someone and actually getting to know somebody to the point where, where I can experience actual intimacy and not yeah. just have sex, because really and truly, do we want sex or do we want intimacy? I think people say that men want intimacy, well, men want just sex and the whole intimacy thing is a woman thing. But I think that's not true, you know? No, it's not true. And I think men have been conditioned to think that's all they want is sex. But I think also men want true intimacy. But maybe because... We've been trained differently. Yes. That's why you think it's just sex, but really and truly because when you look at life, no matter what's accepted by society or not, but a man that has no control over his sexual desire never ends up truly successful. True. You never look at that man and, and clap and be like, oh, this is a respectable person. Not really. Yeah, it's true. So um, just because society thinks it's more acceptable doesn't make it healthy for that man. Yeah. So yeah, anyways, that's, I'm just saying yeah, I also found ways to channel my depression and you know, and but the main part for me and especially I feel like living in London, yeah. this is not a beautiful city. Especially you know? when it's winter and it's grey. Yeah, and it's like, and I think that's why so many great creative geniuses are born as well in cities like this is because you have to be so committed to your inner world and your vision because once you open your eyes and you actually look out of the window 
you literally go yeah. crazy, yeah. you know? But you have to find this space within yourself to channel like your visions and your creativity. And you have to be so dedicated to it in this environment yeah. that when you ride that wave, you can see how much creative talent comes out of London, New York, yeah. LA. I mean, LA is different. It's actually nicer there. Yeah. But it's also a concrete jungle. Okay, you have the beach, but it's not real nature. Yeah. Like, in, you know, so I think there's a lot of cities concrete jungles that that where there is a lot of beautiful art coming out of and i think that's why because you have to be seriously dedicated to what's inside because the moment you look outside yeah. <laughs> you might as well go to a mental institution and, and hand yourself in yeah yeah <laughs> yeah yeah so this is why also like art therapy it's really something that keeps me keeps me sane yeah, and I, I do feel like because I've decide, made certain decisions in my life where I don't want to get up and work. Mm. There's nothing wrong with going, getting up yeah, and working no, for someone yeah. else. It's just I don't want to spend the rest of my life doing that. Yeah. And that I'd rather spend the rest of my life working hard at my own purpose mm. and my own reason or what I believe to be my reason for being here. Yeah. Which is I'm a father to two sons. Yes. So be, being a great dad. Yes. So being my the best version of myself every day mm. so that I can be a better father to them. Mm -hmm. And that, um, being the best version of myself every day yeah. so that I can better serve what I want to do with my life. Mm -hmm. And because I'm starting to walk in that purpose, yeah. I feel like a whole weight has shifted mm, yes, off of me. Yes. And, that, and it's, mm. it, the amount of times I just have to just thank, like I, I find myself thanking God yes, that yes. I'm doing this rather than doing anything else. Yeah. And, that, and it, it, it helps me. It definitely helps me. And, I don't know what tomorrow's gonna bring, but yeah. I'm no longer afraid of it. Listen, I, I can really agree. And not just not afraid, it's like the more I do this art therapy thing. Yeah. And life, the way you live your life is also an art form, especially yeah. if you are not having a job. Like you're literally like a survival artist. Yeah. Because it's like you're doing this for money, doing that, you're just making it work. That's yeah. art itself, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So that kind of also. But the more you go into it, the more aligned I feel. Yeah. And I'm, I'm just like you, even though with all this depression, once I did my, my workouts in the morning and I get home and I ate something healthy and I had some fruits and some veg and, you know. You felt right again. I feel like I'm so blessed that I can even just wake up and go for a long walk. Yeah. And I'm so blessed that I can even come home and take an hour to make a breakfast and to juice this and to, yeah. you know, yeah. make this from scratch. And, you know, I'm so blessed. Yeah. And then the gratitude comes in and, you know, and it's so true. I mean, some people have a nine to five and I guess I'm not, I'm, I'm actually grateful for everybody that does do it because yeah. the only reason in this Europe that people like us can still make it work somehow as well yeah. it's also because there are people that work really hard yeah. <laughs> for this economy it's yeah. not me i mean i work hard but i don't at right now i'm not really contributing a lot to this yeah. economy financially yeah. i'm planning to through my own gifts and through my own ideas but, that, I'm working but, on you, it, but the but fact I'm that you're a, doing your own thing is contributing to the economy yes but at the same time i get that we have this privilege in the west because we have the system as well. Yeah. There's either. people in other countries that don't have that privilege. Yeah. And I do think that that's something, you know, even though I can say I hate capitalism, but in the situation that I'm in, I guess it does serve me somewhere as well. Yeah. Because well, I, 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 it's, it's, it's weird because I do believe the way capitalism truly works is if you keep building yourself up, 
you will eventually get all of that that capital capitalism provides but because you're just you're not building just yourself you're building a brand mm -hmm. and you're cataloging a lot of work capitalism does reward hard work mm. it may not reward the hardest working people so if you're going to a job yeah, for yeah, someone yeah. else and you're the best road sweeper and whatnot ever you may get promoted you may not get promoted and that but you can carry on being the best road sweeper ever. So you're contributing to society. Yes, yes, but yes, yes. if you're doing that same amount of work for your own brand, mm. you will get somewhere. Yeah, 100%. I mean, sometimes I'm just like... I don't know if that was a good example to make, but yeah. You mean in terms of like capitalism? I mean, that's the american dream whatever dream the capitalist dream because the american mm. dream is the capitalist dream the idea of if you work hard you're going to get there eventually mm. i don't know i feel like hard work alone like you said just now mm. kind of that's what i got from it hard work alone has never gotten any success because you can be a successful or hard-working road sweeper but mm. but if that's your dream and then you love it and you're sweeping roads then you are successful in your own rights if that's mm. what you want to do i guess but um, most people these days don't just want to do this job thing. Everybody wants to be an entrepreneur. Everybody yeah. wants to have their own business and has their dream. And and that's not that. That's almost not everyone. Right. Yeah, but it's not going to be right for every single person to do that. But that's what I'm saying. And sometimes my doubt comes in. I'm like, is it even for me? But it doesn't matter because at this point, there is literally no option. Yeah. And that's just how it's going to be. And, and that's just, I'm going to just, I'm literally dying on that hill. Like I'm going to continue. Mm. And, the, and the reason why I think that the hard work is going to make it, make it work is because unless you're absolutely stupid, mm. the hard work you do, maybe at the beginning you don't know what you're doing, but as you go, you're going to get better exactly. and you're going to figure out what it takes. Yeah, exactly. And then you're going to, and that's how the hard work, it's not repeating the same hard yeah, work all the time. Yeah, it's like, yeah, yeah. unless you're absolutely batshit stupid, which I don't think I am. You're not. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make it somehow. But it's just like giving yourself the grace and the patience and the breaks. The breaks. Like how guilty and how unkind I am to myself sometimes. Just mm. simply not taking breaks and giving myself grace and then burning out. That's also part of my depression for sure. That is just, yeah, one of the things. But with what you're doing, like success stories belong to risk takers, mm. and that, and you're you're taking a mega risk. But the rewards for who you are as a person, yeah, and who you will be in like five years time, yeah, because you've taken this risk, will be so beautiful, and it's hard to see it now so even when you're being hard on yourself it's almost unfair sometimes you have to reward yourself for taking a risk mm. and congratulate yourself for taking a risk mm. and yeah that. and even to the point of you saying that it's do or die and you're gonna die on this hill and that that should be always seen as a blessing that you've been brave enough to take that path because if if you if you, you don't celebrate these little victories that most 99% of the population mm -hmm. are not brave enough to take then like how do you enjoy your journey so, um, I, I think, I think you need to stop rewarding your depression and mm. giving it fuel in terms of, cause again, that's the thing that was fueling my depression was my anger. So mm. when you get angry at something that you think's not going your way and that, and then it triggers your depression or it adds to your depression or why are you feeling depressed and you have to use the fact that you are getting up to do what you want to do 
and you're out there hustling and being creative in in your hustle as well mm-hmm. and that and you're you're being creative in your hustle and you're hustling your creativity these are good things and good um personality traits to have and you have to reward yourself it's if it was easy everyone would be at it every time someone changes the world it's never easy otherwise people would just be changing the world for fun mm. and that yeah changing the world comes at great sacrifice mm. so you have to find ways to acknowledge what you are doing in in a positive way that's true and and just not make it like a capitalist thing and I mean, i'm watching so many things now mm. as well that have helped me um i was actually watching KRS one yesterday and he was talking about how Who? KRS one oh KRS one yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah oh my god you need to he's listen to him oh my god he's like he's having this like tempo of hip hop and he has like one episode coming out every week that is so i need his voice so badly like yeah, that's genius. one person that i would really want to meet in person one day like even thinking of it makes me emotional because I really, when I hear his voice, it's he like... Caught, he caught it's me like, when, when I was really young with a song called My Philosophy. So mm. you have to listen to that. But yeah, carry I on. will, yes. And I mostly hear him speak. I don't know much of his music. And I just, he just, when he speaks, it's like, like he's my spiritual father. Yeah, he's Like, you know what I mean? I'm just like, oh my God, like I just, I really would love to like meet him one day. I, I think I will. No, you're going to do one of these with him. Yes, I think I will. I will. Yeah. I do think so, yes. But um, definitely, and he was talking about how he volunteers, how he's actually a volunteer, because he's been nationally um, in America recognized for the work he does with hip-hop, with hip-hop teaching, teaching hip-hop. Yeah. But he teaches hip-hop in a spiritual, philosophical way, yeah. in a very deep way. It's not yeah. just about, it's not about hip-hop culture at all. It's about, you know. Yeah. He's a deep guy. Very, deep, very guy. deep guy. And then he was talking about how he realized that he's volunteering for the culture mm. and for his people. And initially, like, I'm working on taking money out of the equation. It's like, I, of course, I want to make money as well. But really and truly, it's like, I, I'm also like, I've been volunteering for volunteering many many hours yeah. for my community yeah and i think that i love that yeah and the way he just put it is like it's, it's social currency it and is. that ha- has so much pa- more power than than money itself because it rewards you beyond things you can buy yeah and i really want to dedicate this year on 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 connecting, truly connecting with people. Yeah. Because sometimes this mental health is really down to like loneliness. Yeah. And in this London, but generally in the world where we stand, I think a general thing. Have you got any family over here? No, I have nobody. Yeah, so that's that's no family do it. at all. But I've been living like that for many years, for over a decade, for fourteen years now. I never had family. and I never I don't really miss my family. Sometimes I do, and then I go home, and I'm like, it's, it's weird, but I, I, I just love, it's not a family missing thing, but I, I think I really, I'm focusing a lot this year to actually make genuine connections with people that I genuinely connect with, kind of thing, yeah. which I've never focused, consciously focused on. It's just like kind of whatever, but, I really want to, from the bo- like from the bottom of my heart, I really want to be there for people, you know, yeah. just really be there for people, support people, help people. You do know when you set your intentions to to joy, yes, and looking for joy and doing joyful things yes. for other people, yes, and that like only good things can happen. Like you yeah. may may meet one or two dodgy people along the journey, but yeah. the ma- once you put those sort of intentions out to the universe, it will attract good people towards you. Yeah, and and that and I think that alone is just gonna do a lot. And I already noticed it that I've been doing it more this year, and it's just lovely sometimes to just get messages from people and. 
And I used to never be like that. I used to be like, oh, why is this person? Like, I used to get really annoyed <laughs> just being messaged and called. And mm. But I really, like, really, really love it. Like, just people I've been talking to, connecting with and helping with. I don't even see it like help. They're like, oh, my God, thank you so much. I'm like, it's, it's nothing. It's mm. like, I love it. Like, you are helping me as well. Like, mm. I, and then even, like, I have a girl, like, a friend that I made now. And she, I remember the first night I went out with her. Yeah. And she was like, because she was going through something and she was like super sad. And she was like, I don't know how I'm going to get through this day. And I was like, oh, let me come. Let's go out. Let's do something. And she, the whole time in the evening, she was like, oh my God, like, I'm, thank you so much for coming out. And I was mm. just like, I, I came out also because I wanted to get to know you and connect mm. with you. Yeah. And I think we really got to this point in society where... Every little thing we feel like we owe people. Yeah. Like, what have we come to as a society? Like, every little thing somebody does or somebody makes you feel nice, you feel like you owe them. Do you think that's to do with capitalism and because everything becomes like something you exchange? So you start exchanging favours? Yeah, and, and London is a lot like that, I feel. Oh my God. I don't know if this is constantly doing this or I don't want to know. Um, yeah, I think it must be a capitalist thing. It must be because it's like, because I, I, I proper noticed it when I moved to London. Yeah. I was like, people here, they're not going to be friends with you unless they feel like they can get something out of you. Yeah, it might be a city thing as well. It's not like that in Vienna. Yeah, but Vienna's not like a city like London, is it? No, not like London, no. Let's get into, let me ask you a question from my game. Yes, please. That's actually, um, what relationship in your life do you wish you could improve? All of them. Okay. <laughs> All of them. Right, every single relationship I have, I wish I could improve them. Okay. So that the people that I have the relationship with get more out of me and I get more out of them. And yeah, I don't think I should ever rest on my laurels in terms of how I relate to people. Uh, I could be closer with my mum, I could be closer with my brothers and sisters, I could be closer with both my son's mums. I could be closer with my sons. I've just met you, I could be closer with you. Close to every every single friend. Like everyone I know. Like I just would love to be able to make sure that every time I'm in their company that they're getting the very best of me. Mm. And hopefully that brings out the best in them, so they give me their best too. 